Do you need uh, questions? Uh, one at the mic. Um, Bismillah. My name is Adam Isa, and um, I am the uh, president and founder of Dar al Hijra Islamic Center based in Toronto, and also the founder and president of Coalition of Muslim Organization, ISCOMO, that been consisted of about 40 organizations but was not active last couple of years. And my question based on three points is that I'd like to mention and then to ask you directly the question. Uh, number one is uh, there is a lack of good coordination between the Islamic uh, financial institutions and local Islamic scholars in Canada. And number two, uh, less confidence of the halal hood or Sharia compliance of Islamic finance institution, and let alone the readiness of Muslim community of Canada to buy homes. But there are many Muslims all over the world who love to have housing investment in Canada if they get Sharia compliance trust worth in Canada, because Canada in the view of many Muslims that I personally know, is favorable country to invest than USA. Now, the nutshell point is, we have two difficulties. Either there is a doubt of Sharia compliance issue, or there is a lack of resources or funding. My question is, together, how can we come over towards these obstacles here in Canada, especially when we are talking? Thank you. On the, on the Sharia compliance side, uh, internationally, uh, Islamic finance has been growing and there are set standards. Um, IOFI, which is an international body, which we are also member states, that if any institution is providing any Islamic financial products, they at all times should have three independent Sharia scholars who should have a degree of expertise in Islamic finance at all times monitoring them independently. So these sort of standards we've uphold and we encourage other institutions to uphold. Uh, by having that standard, you do have an independent body. So within the community, uh, people have uh, the, the opportunity to object or to question, and they go to that independent body uh, to confirm um, or ask questions. And uh, we do utilize these sort of uh, scholars who, who come here to Canada to use as a vehicle to educate the, the community scholars also uh, in terms of how the, the products are structured and how they're Sharia compliant. Uh, at a, at a grassroots level, uh, uh, Islamic finance is new, so it, it, there is a bit of a learning curve also within our community. But even simple things like uh, how, a, a, for example, halal meat, how it's slaughtered, most of the common Muslims don't have that knowledge. So in the end, the common layman is just looking for that it, it is approved, it is endorsed, the community supports it, and that's a solution that they're looking to, to uphold. To. Make one. I'll just make one brief comment on the um, inbound um, investment of those looking for Sharia-compliant uh, housing loans as their investment portfolio. I think the Canadian market now is not sufficiently developed in terms of size in order to package and put together investments that would attract capital um, uh, from overseas. I just uh, th jump in there, too. Uh, <clears throat> on the topic of... Uh, you know, lack of coordination or lack of overseas investors in the United States. Uh, and oh, by the way, we are also a member of uh, OFI, uh, follow OFI, OFI standards. Um, you know, I, I have to say I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very disappointed. Uh, not uh, against any one particular organization, just in general that um, you know here we are in the United States doing so much, and there's so little support from the international network of Islamic financial institutions. There's many. I mean, I think a speaker at the Harvard conference that I was at over the weekend said three to 64 uh, today in the world, and many of them are quite large in scope. You know, multi-billion-dollar organizations. So you know, for example, I spent uh, 30 days in uh, the Middle East uh, at one point earlier in my career. Uh, looking for institutional investors, um, and other than eating a great deal of uh, wonderful uh, uh, food and uh, learning firsthand the experience of uh, Ramadan in a uh, majority Muslim country, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, and learning a little more Arabic, it was a little, really a waste of time, you know, frankly. So, 
Um, I have to say, I was kind of, I was kind of really shocked and surprised by that experience because you know here we are, we're a leader in the United States. It's the largest economy in the world, and you know although certainly you know you've heard about some of our troubles, you know there's wonderful investment opportunities in the United States. Uh, and if I was uh, overseas, a uh, large institution looking for risk diversification, I'd certainly would consider high quality uh, investment opportunities in the United States. So I, I, I just kind of scratched my head about the whole experience. Thank you. Uh, briefly, if, if, I'm sorry, uh, if I could just briefly comment just very quickly on the UK experience <laughs> of uh, the first speaker. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned that the take up of Mortgages in the UK is very low, uh, Islamic mortgages. Uh, so I'm from the UK, my name is Hassan Sharani. I'm not uh, actually a practitioner, we're just independent. Uh, the, 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 main, the main reason for that is actually the structure of the UK housing market and also the structure of the Muslim population. The Muslim middle class in the UK is much lower than in North America. And also the housing market is uh, very, uh, I mean, the housing is very expensive in the UK and uh, the cost of the Islamic mortgage products is, is very high for uh, for many people to take up. So that's the basic reason, I think. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, there's no more time for any more questions for this panel.